you've been at Mustard down here, right? Yes. Um, there are some people against okay, me, personally. <laughs> Have no okay. The like I've heard about Bitcoin probably in Big Bang Theory. Like that's as much as yeah. I know about Bitcoin. <laughs> and from my perception, it looks like a rich people kind of thing. Cause all the things I've been seeing is like this big people. Like okay, I'm drug dealers. Cause that I was watching a series that they were doing a trade with Bitcoin. <laughs> and a person like me, can I go to Walmart with this Bitcoin? What is this Bitcoin? <laughs> so I'm, I'm really glad you she asked She brings up this. a very good point, though. Yeah. I mean, it is a rich people thing. Like, you're not going to have people... Like, so this is actually... I'm really glad you asked me this, because this is something that, as a person that is really, you know, not monetarily invested in Bitcoin, but as a, pa as a passion project, drives me up a freaking wall, is people love to focus on the price. So... To, to answer your question at a really high level, Bitcoin is a currency. It's a currency that's created on the internet using a sort of peer-to-peer -peer network, like people just running software. It's not a currency that's issued by a bank or a, or a central government. But really, fundamentally, it's a currency. It's like the US dollar to the euro. How do you get it? Like, if I work, am I paid with Bitcoin? You like, could be. That, that is a thing that has existed in some niche cases. The easiest way to get it is to uh, get it on an online exchange. So much like you can go to a currency exchange and exchange your US dollars for Japanese yen when you're in Japan, you can exchange your US dollars, your euros for Bitcoin, for Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, all these currencies. Um, so what people love to get really hung up on is the price of one Bitcoin to the US dollar, which historically has like really crazy skyrocketed. Like one Bitcoin to the US dollar was at one point, you know, fractions of a penny, it's now thousands of dollars. And, you know, they're fractional. You can buy a fraction of a Bitcoin, right? It's not just like you have to spend one Bitcoin to get a coffee. You know, it, it gets, it's really subdivisible. But people get all excited about this. People are like, yeah, invest in it. Like, you're going to be rich. And I, I, I could not possibly care less about that. Seriously. Like, I play around with Bitcoin. I buy it to use it. I use it as a currency. AT&T, the phone company, accepts Bitcoin as a form of payment now. Um, there's a fork of Bitcoin called Bitcoin Cash that I use and focus on. It's really designed to be used as a day-to-day -day currency. So I pay my phone bill every month in Bitcoin Cash. I use it to buy goods and services. I have my laptop, my phone that are sitting right here I bought with Bitcoin Cash. There is this debate in the community about whether or not it's just supposed to be a store of value that lets you get rich and sort of hedge against the US dollar collapsing or something. I think that's useless and uninteresting, I really do. I think this is designed to be a, a currency. And, and you're asking about, you know, sort of, is this for wealthy people? The true, incredible, valuable use case of Bitcoin that I think is what's going to make the difference is banking the unbanked. There are many, many people in the world that do not have access to privileged banking like we do here in the US and in Europe, right? Any of us can walk down to a bank branch, hand them some forms of ID, get a checking account, you can check your balance online, you get a debit card, you can swipe anywhere, awesome. Most of the world doesn't live like that. There are many places where, believe it or not, the nearest bank branch is 100 miles away, but they have cell phone towers. Because cell phones have become ubiquitous around the world. All you need to store Bitcoin Cash, to transact with a friend in a, in a local market or anything like that, is a cell phone with a data connection. You know, without, again, going into the technical details, the way that this is designed to use is you are your own bank in Bitcoin. You download a software application. That application stores secret keys that are your control of the money. There is no institution that you have to deal with. There's no bank. There's no central government. It is truly peer-to-peer, -peer, me to you. And so the real use case that is valuable is bringing financial sovereignty over your own money to people in the world that don't have access to that now. Because, again, there are so many places in the world where you can have a cell phone and a data connection, but you can't have a bank account. And you're dealing with cash, and it's dangerous. And that, to me, is the truth. I don't want to go on and on about this, but you can tell that this is a, a thing that touches me particularly hard, right? So my vision for cryptocurrencies is 
every day when you get up and you go to Starbucks and you buy your morning coffee and you buy your books for school, that you are transacting with a cryptocurrency. Because ultimately that means everybody in the world is more in control over their own money. Um, it can't be censored. It can be sent anywhere in the world for fractions of a penny instantaneously. And the power of that is extraordinary. So I think that um, while it is unfortunate that much of the focus has come on the wealthy and the ability to speculate on cryptocurrencies as, as assets, um, I think the true, val the true value of it goes um, is really for the people that don't have much. And that's where it's gonna impact the most as we see adoption continue. So sorry for the very long answer, but no, it's okay. it's, um, Thank you. yeah, there are a lot of people out there that are working on that and focusing on that. And they don't get as much attention as the speculators, the people that had it in 2013 and then went bought a Lamborghini with it. I mean, the, the people that are, are working on it as a transactional currency don't get the attention, but they're, they're doing the good work out there in the background. They just don't make it into Big Bang Theory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Josh, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. Out of time. Yeah.